What's up? Here we are, back again with another video journal. This is video journal episode 129, and I'm at Gasworks Spark today. See Gasworks Spark and downtown Seattle in my face. Um, so let's start off with uh, I did. I posted some videos from my phone and camera, which I needed. Oh, so anyway, this is where I talk about my artistic and musical journey that went everything went down last week. Hopefully, it's not too windy. It's a little breeze. But I'm hoping the, hopeful that the microphone's not picking up the breeze and you can hear me. So anyways, we got 19 minutes and 24 seconds left to go. Um, and I did post some videos from my phone or camera. This is a playlist I now have on YouTube, which reminds me, subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Do it. Thanks very much for doing that. Um, trying to build it on my 87 subscribers. Woohoo! If you want to learn more about what's going down in the local scene and what I'm doing and all that good stuff, then check it out. Um, do that, hit the subscribe button it's down there somewhere. Um, so I posted a few videos because I went to two shows this last weekend, Friday night and Saturday night, both in the Sunset Tavern in Ballard. And the first show I saw, uh, who was it? General Mojo's was on the lineup. <laughs> Theoretics was on the lineup. And screens were on the lineup. So I posted videos from my phone from all those bands. One, or not from my phone, from my camera this time. I need to think of another better name for that playlist. Videos from my phone and camera. Sounds, or camera. Sounds dumb. It was kind of cool when it was videos from my camera. Videos from my phone. It's kind of sounded cool, I thought, but now I just got to think of something else. Um, change up the playlist. But I posted that, and then I also went on Saturday night, said Back to the Sunset, went and saw Massey Ferguson and Whitney Manger and Annie, I don't remember her last name, Annie Ryan Band, something like that. Anyways, check out the playlist and you can find out who it was. And so it was great. My highlight, actually my highlight out of the whole weekend was um, the Whitney Manger because I've never seen her yet and I was pretty impressed by her backing band. It was pretty amazing. So check them out. The, gu the guitar player's name was Woody who really, I really enjoyed his guitar playing. It was like, it was familiar but not boring if that makes any sense to you because you know, a lot of people can play guitar and play the blues riffs and do all that stuff, and it's just like long, boring. But his were, um, it just sounded fresh and fun and nice, and I really enjoyed what he brought to the band. So check out Whitney Manger and her band when you get a chance. Highly recommend it. Um, and then, of course, check out the playlist videos for my phone. Check out all the videos that I've been taking. I've done a bunch now of, uh, of local bands doing it up so check that out okay now I'm gonna get to I didn't write that down now I'm gonna get to my list of things my little book and I'll just go from the top to the bottom um, the first one I wrote down is three things I write every day so I, last time I think it was or last two times I told you about how I'm writing down things that I want to like this whole self manifesting idea and what it's become apparent is like in order to manifest anything you have to project it you have to visualize it right and you have to work for it. You can't do one or the other so much. You have to know what it is you want to work toward and then you have to um, actually do the work to create it. And so there's three things and it's slightly embarrassing but I'm going to mention it anyway because one of them, the first thing is um, that women find me attractive and it's the reason I say that because I internally I've had a hard time with um, feeling beautiful I guess feeling like I am somebody worth being attracted to and so I want to change that dialogue that internal dialogue I have in my head about the whole thing because I've always I've always had a really interesting um, relationship with um, meeting women and that kind of thing and I haven't quite figured out how it works but I also know that my internal dialogue isn't the, the best when it comes to trying to create more in that way so every day I'm trying to change that internal dialogue so that's why I say that and yes it is an, an 
embarrassing idea, but it's true. So, and as you know, I want to be authentic with you and honest and tell you how it is for me. Um, the second thing I write down every day is that I am making money, and this is all, as I've told you before, it's all as if it's already happening. So I'm saying I'm making money off, I'm making a living off what brings me joy is the second thing. So that's very important. The third thing is something that it's kind of a leftover from how I battled my own anxiety whenever I feel anxious. I start to repeat in my head this, this saying and it kind of relates to the first one in some ways as well. So you'll hear it in a second. So I go, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm beautiful, I'm calm. Whenever I'm feeling anxious, I try to tell myself that I'm something other than being anxious because one thing about anxiety that I've told myself for a while is that I am anxious and I'm trying to tell myself that I'm something other than that. I'm trying not to repeat that dialogue of I am an anxious. I'm just trying to get rid of that and tell myself what it is that I am. That I am. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm beautiful, I'm calm. I want to be those things and not other things. So those are the three things. I had a list of like 10 things that I realized, you know, there's really, I could boil down a lot of it has to do with I'm making a living off what brings me joy. There was a lot of things in that, like I want more people to be aware of the podcast and I want more people to be aware of my music. And I want more people, you know, I want to make money. You know, there's a lot of things related to the, the external things I do, these video journals, everything I do. But it really, if you boil it all down, you can really funnel it into, I want to make money off of those things. And those things bring me joy, so I just kind of consolidate what they So there's that. Posters, videos, photo. So last week on Facebook, um, I somebody, a few people actually posted things about what they're looking for, and one, and what. So one person posted they wanted a in-house poster maker, and then another person says. I need somebody that makes videos and another person says I need somebody that takes photos I do all three of those things so if you need any of those things done for you let me know we can work out something that just it's just something I wanted to say <laughs> uh, that came up this last week another idea so how do you support the scene I wrote down um, how do you support the scene I'd love to know how you support the scene speaking of I don't have a jam of the week this week I need to know what your jam of the week is um, so let me know what your jam of the week is. I'm trying to think if that's actually true. Do I not have a jam of the week? I guess I don't, because I'm not thinking of it. But what is your jam of the week? What is the song that you've been listening to that you want to let me know about? I'd love to hear about it. But how do you support the scene? Again, I've said this before many times, and that's come up over the last week. It's like, I feel like a lot of people feel like supporting, you know, how you support is just, you know, saying nice set and giving somebody a pat on the back. And there's actually so much more that can be done to support each other than just saying nice set. It's like actually telling your your social networks about the things that you're liking and whatnot. I think a lot of us get tunnel vision about our own projects and we don't realize that if you're reaching out and helping out others, that'll help you out too. And that's basically what I'm doing with, I mean, I guess that kind of really just boils down to why I'm even doing all this stuff. I was thinking about it this week as well like why am I doing the podcast and these video journals and you know there's an element of it that I I want to see if I can create something for myself but I also get a lot of joy out of just being involved in the scene and you know it's like I get as much joy out of being there and doing something as I do when I get some kind of pat on the back for what I'm doing so it's like I love being out there I love supporting the scene I love I think we have a lot to offer but it's just figuring out how do we get it out to more people to be become aware of. It's hard to do. It's hard to figure out. I've been doing it for a good solid two years, three years if you count these video journals. Ooh, I'm almost out of batteries. So Hopefully, I'll make it. But um, so there's that. Um, and just to, there's a, an honest factor I wanted to bring up. I said I I wrote down I'm pissed about the move, and there is a, an element my move moving to San Diego. There definitely is an element of being frustrated and pissed off about it because I feel like I'm there's a there's a good momentum that I've been building with everything that I've been doing with my music and my podcast and these video journals and such and I'm forced into not being able to continue them the same way that I have been and I'll have to figure out how I'm going to continue it all 
and I'm just not looking forward to the idea of having to start completely from scratch, which I don't want to do. And I've been saying, you know, a lot of people haven't heard this. You know, a lot of people hear that I'm moving and think the podcast is going to stop. And, you know, it just... And I've been saying on social networks and through the podcast that the podcast is not going to stop. It's going to keep going. Um, that's my goal. That's what I want to accomplish. And if I can find ways to, you know, promote or what's it called, uh, inspire people to donate to the podcast to help me with, you know, travel expenses to get back up to Seattle and things like that, that would be awesome. That's that's a goal of mine. That's what I want to have happen. And, I just hope the scene finds what I'm doing is a value. I don't think, I'm, I've mentioned this like multiple times this week, I don't think what I'm doing right now, the, the scene values in this moment. I think what, if I keep it going, if I'm able to keep it going for the next five to ten years, I think that's when the real value will be shown, that this documentation has happened through Word on the Street for the last ten years, and people will be able to look back on it and then people will have grown through it like some of the guests I've had on may move on to do better bigger better things and then other people will be able to look at it as an archive of like what happened 10 years what happened in 2016 and such in the, in the Seattle music scene when we're in 2026 well 2026 that's crazy but anyways those are ideas those are some ideas so I, I just wanted to also restate that I don't as far as far as being a photographer at local shows, I really don't like projectors. I do not like when people bring projectors to their shows and not use that venue lights because there's a lot less light on the stage and it's really hard to take photographs. So consider that, I've said it before, if you want someone to actually be able to photograph what you're doing and share it to the world, your projectors that you think are awesome and cool actually could potentially hurt your exposure uh, think about it um, I'm I think people should focus their projections more maybe set up like a 10 foot square screen behind them and project on that rather than projecting on the whole entire stage and incorporate the house venue lights as well um, so those are some ideas we're on the street this week was with um, the Seattle's tribute to the last waltz and it was I mentioned so I do this thing on my Facebook pages so on the we're on the street Facebook page I post just the post about it I, I repost exactly what I put on the, the website wotspodcast.com I repost that and I put it exactly the same thing on my personal page I always put some kind of personal touch to it like something about the day something personal and the thing that I mentioned this week was this was my all-time so far favorite episode version of the podcast and the reason is and what I said on the pot on the web on Facebook was it's a purely self-indulgent reason and that reason was because I was asked a question and it would became and that's where I hope to get maybe through word on the street or maybe because of word on the street I would like the scene to value what I have to say that's a goal of mine and ask me what they what I think about the scene and that's what happened on this episode of the podcast Michael asked me based on some of the things that I've been saying in these conversations um, about what I feel about tribute bands in the city and I gave an honest opinion on it a very short one I could go on much further detail about it all but it was you know but it got me it got the podcast to a place took a, uh, what I said was it took 106 two years and 106 episodes to get to a place where I'm trying to get with the podcast and I hope that it continues and I hope more people start to engage the conversation I mean 90 you know most of the people that are on the podcast are on it as guests feeling like they'll wait and be asked questions and not come to the podcast saying I have something to say here's my agenda here's my thing I want to say about our scene about what's going on and then we have a conversation around that that's what I hope we can get to eventually because as I've said before I've mentioned many times this week as well was that the podcast isn't about the guests the podcast is about the culture of the scene so it shouldn't matter who is the guest everybody has a different kind of viewpoint on what's going on in our scene and that's what the conversation is about that's what the podcast is about so just because I don't have famous people on my my uh, podcast shouldn't 
once I can get people interested in the culture of the Seattle music scene, that's when my podcast will become more interesting to more people. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you. Of course, I want to know what your jam of the week is, but if anything I've said today on this video journal you want to respond to, I would love to hear your thoughts on it. So let me know what you think. What do you think about projections at shows? Do you think it's a it adds to the show, or do you think it's just a gimmick that people are doing right now? Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, other than that, that's it for this week, I think. That's all I wrote down. It's kind of cold outside. I hope the wind wasn't too bad. I'll get our, our city. It's out a little out of focus. I think I'm in focus. But Anyways, here you go. Thanks for watching. I'm The Zim. This is The Zim's Video Journal, episode 129. And I would love it if you subscribed to this channel. Do that up, do that up. I think I'm on 87 right now. One thing I did want to mention, so I did mention last week was I um, changed the intro. And just as a, I need to change it again because I don't really like my delivery of the intro of the podcast. But I like what I'm saying, I don't like how I said it. So essentially I'm just trying to promote you to you know, go to iTunes, leave a rating or review, donate to the podcast, and, sh and like and share the Facebook page. But I don't like my delivery of it, so I need to work on that delivery a little bit. Oh, well, I gotta mention as well, I got three minutes left. December 16th, Skylark Cafe in West Seattle. Um, the Zim and A-Rock, Sea Lab and the Kettle Black, uh, Mountains and Tunnels, and Kimo Meraki are all playing. It's gonna be an awesome show. Come on out, $10, 21 plus. I'd love to see you there. It's kind of my farewell show. I'm not calling it that though. I'm calling it my life transition show. So let's do it. You and me together, I'd love to see you there. Let's have it, let's sell it out. Let's have 100, I want 100 people there, minimum. I want 140, I think the capacity is around 140. I want 140 people there. So help me get the word out. Let's do this. I'll link up the event page. And I'll link up whatever else I mentioned today. The, the videos from my phone slash camera videos at the top so all right i'm out of time pretty much now so catch you next week and yeah peace out